Hi, Ryan. Hi, Barbara. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, I, I, I'm a little nervous of being on this side of an interview and this side of a camera, but I think we're we're gonna practice. It's gonna be good. <laughs> well, I'm I'm, I'm I'm happy to have you agree to do this and to talk with me. Yeah. Um. Also, a very new experience for me and the Minnesota Jewish Theater is filming. Um, yeah. You know, the pandemic has really been a challenge for theater artists. And um, I don't know if you know, we just came off doing our very first outdoor production, 25 Questions for a Jewish Mother. And now we're launching into um, a production of Operation Immigration that we're filming to show online. And I am truly thrilled that you signed on as our cinematographer. Well, I'm so thrilled that you're trying something, you know, it's, it's such a, I, I mean, I think it's caught us all off guard and trying in, in, especially in the producing of live events. I can't imagine like trying to wrap your head around how to pivot when you're so used to delivering things in very specific ways. So it's fun to be involved in the experiment with you. I, it's, it's been exciting. Well, everything, you know, that is a challenge, I try to look at as an opportunity. So this is an opportunity that Minnesota Jewish Theater Company has to, you know, do, do new things. But would you just yeah. talk a little bit about what exactly a cinematographer does? Yeah, I guess, you know, on a, on a traditional film set, the cinematographer is kind of the, I mean, maybe this is just my own arrogance, but I, I feel like, you know, the cinematographer and the director are kind of the two key collaborators of how we're, we're, we're getting, putting a story together. Um, I kind of approach it as, you know, like everybody that's working on a film set from director to actors to props uh, builders to scenic artists to, you know, everybody's a storyteller. And that's not different than the theater. Um, the lighting designer tells a story using lights. You know, we're all kind of uh, bringing our craft together to, to tell the story that you know, usually might live inside the mind of the, the director. So, so my role is to try to try to put a visual and see if I can interpret what's in what's in his or her mind and, uh, and, and, and put it in a frame. Um, you know, but on, on a film set, I'd be in charge of lighting, um, in charge of the camera there would be you know a whole grip department a whole you know there's a gaffer that's setting the lights for me but I'm designing that look I'm designing the lighting I'm designing where the camera is going to be and then there's a whole bunch of collaboration that happens there too of people setting the light in a different place and going what about this and you know but yeah so it's a it's a it's a big role that like kind of spans a lot of areas on, on film, but um, ultimately I, I feel like there's such a similar uh, language uh, with theater artists. I found a lot of common language to share when, when, when talking with theater directors and theater, we're all trying to tell the story. And I think what I'm exploring, especially with Robert on this one, is is like how do we use the camera to to tell that story, to 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 emphasize the parts that we want people to pay attention to, and and kind of bring people along on that on that journey. Yeah, yeah. Well, on your website, you say that. For me, filmmaking has been that conduit to see life through someone else's experience. 
Yeah. Can, can you I, say anything more about that? Yeah. Um, you know, there, there was, there was a moment in my career where, yeah, I, I think someone described seeing film as, as this means of like building empathy. And of course, I think that a lot of theater artists talk about the, that same thing, right? It's, it's about seeing someone else's story play out in front of you. And for me, largely that happens through movies and that happened through, you know, the cinema. So it just, you know, I, I don't know if I would say I was like a really sheltered kid, but you know, I had a very specific upbringing um, that really didn't expose me to a whole lot of culture and a whole lot of larger world than the like neighborhood that I grew up in. Um, so film has been that thing where I've, I've gotten to experience other people's lives, you know, and other people's stories and feel that kind of emotional pull. And then, uh, and then the process of making film, you know, I made, a, I made a lot of documentaries, especially, and to just be with people who are living those stories. I mean, you cannot be in that environment and walk away the same. You're, you're just always right. changed. And every project that I pick up, I'm just always, yeah. yeah. Well, you said that growing up, you weren't exposed um, or necessarily in an environment that nurtured, for example, filmmaking. Um, so how did you get interested in this? Yeah. I think, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that, yeah, like it wasn't like encouraged. I, I don't know, I guess I, I always had a little bit of a, a, a punk rock, spirit. Um, I grew up in a conservative uh, evangelical Christian family and, and community. Um, and what, there were what definitely... What town was that like, in or what state? It, it, was, it was right here in Minnesota, just Brooklyn Park. Oh, okay. Uh, Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, like, we kind of just, like, really... I'm gonna say that we like isolated ourselves. That's, I mean, we didn't, but like, we definitely knew that like, this was the good people we wanted to be with. And then everybody else was a little scary and a little dangerous. And we didn't know what it was, what anybody else would do to, I mean, we're, everybody was always so afraid of being corrupted and, and, and stolen away from our faith or, or whatever. And, um, I, I can definitely remember there being like movies that came out and, you know, people that I still have relationships with today were people that were like boycotting these movies and holding up signs outside of movie theaters. And, and I was, I was like walking past them. I'm like, okay, I'm just going, I'm going to go into the movie and watch the movie. And I would watch it and this movie that everybody was so afraid of and everybody that was ready to boycott, I walked away going, I think that actually told me more about the things that I already do believe. But it opened, you know, it opened me to a different place. But really there's that like, that's that element that of the things that I, it's not as dangerous as everybody around me felt. Um, and so that was just kind of the, there was, there was, there was just little seeds like that. How, yeah, how just kind of started yeah, making my world bigger and bigger. Right. How does family um, acknowledge the work that you do as a cinematographer? Do they, are they open um, to it? You know, I don't know. I, you know, I don't, I wouldn't say that they engage with it a lot. Um, I mean, I, you know, they know of what I do, um, but also kind of the worlds that I'm a part of, 
worlds i mean they're they're nothing to be afraid of but like honestly like they kind of are afraid of it you know it's always this like nervous there's this nervousness of being corrupt or being uh you know like stolen away from you know the the good thing that they've decided to make their life about right um, right and so and so there's a lot of there's a lot of difficult conversations that happen but um I mean, there's there's still a lot of there's still a lot of love there. There's still a lot of like understanding that we we try to get to, but it can be it can be a complicated uh, path for sure. Yeah. Um, so clearly, in the film work you've done over the years, you've been exposed to so many different things, and you've learned a lot, I'm sure, about experiences that people have. Is there anything that's been very special for you? And even technically applied something you might have grasped from one project and used it in another project? Mm. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, I, think, I think the things that, that stand out um, you know, I've I've done a lot of work, uh, like documentary in uh, the Minneapolis public schools. Oh. Um, and and inside of that world, there was huge. Um, I mean, I I I had been I had been interested and kind of uh, gravitated to issues of racial justice, like back in high school, um, and in my work in Minneapolis public schools, a lot of that really kind of came to, to the forefront of, you know, issues that were kind of always being talked about, always going on. We were always talking about um, needing to do something or find a way, you know, they were looking for solutions to problems like um, uh, kids of color being susp suspended from schools in a, at a higher rate than white kids, or, or they were, you know, the, we were definitely talking about opportunity gaps all the time. Um, so I feel like my interest from a, from kind of a deep past, and that just really energized that part of my brain and my, my uh, interests um, to a point that that's really kind of come to the forefront of a lot of my work, I feel. And, and, and I think that couples with the idea that cinema has opened me up to um, all these different voices have come in and, and I've kind of wanted to partner with and participate in just an idea of bringing more voices into filmmaking, into Interesting. I mean, just really storytelling is is what I'm interested in. Um, I happen to have this like cinema craft, but um, but it's but yeah, it's 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 really like the it, those are the stories that interest me the most. And how can I just partner with them, offer this thing that I've developed, and see if there's a way that we can bring that to somebody else in the hopes that that, you know, world opens up for somebody else again, you know? Is there anything that's, in particular? That's kind of been my cycle. Is anything there any, specific? Well, no, I was gonna ask you if there's anything in particular that um, has engaged you with Operation Immigration and Avi's piece and story about his father and his background, you know, as a Jew in Iran and then coming over here and assimilating. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna think about that for just a second. I- Because it I, certainly I mean, I think, is a, a culture. Part of that too. You know, a culture that- um, Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm maybe not like specifically in my work, but um, you know, my my wife and I took a a trip 
before kids. Um, we called it our baby moon. We went to we went to uh, Andalusia, Spain, kind of the Moorish region of Spain, and we were in uh, just this old town, Cordoba, and there was just this kind of amazing history in this town of this very like ecumenical, you know, the Islamic religion and the Christian religion and the Jewish religion all kind of living together sometimes in peace. And, and, and there were these like education programs where each culture would educate each other about, about their different religions and their different belief systems. And, and they just kind of grew together as, um, as, as, as these different people. I don't know, I'm, I, maybe I'm not answering that question exactly, but I feel like there's, there's this, there's this idea of, to me, that that just kind of brought in an idea that, you know, our communities are stronger, the more diverse they are, the more we can learn to embrace the stranger among us, you know, or the, you know, the immigrants, the, the, the person that's seeking refuge, they bring a value. It's not something that we need to be afraid of. Um, you know, I've, I've worked with a lot of uh, a Somali community as well, where that particular uh, touchy point for certain communities in Minnesota and I was certainly even like my own family, you know, it's this, it's the, it's an unknown. It's a, it's a people group they're not familiar with. They don't have the contact with and to kind of bring stories like that to, to my family, to my, to the people that I grew up with, all of those folks. I mean, that's, that gives me a lot of energy to, to, to want to be a part of that. Well, I think that it's understandable in a way um, that if something is not familiar to us, then we don't know it, we don't understand it, but yet if we open ourselves up to getting to know it and embracing, I mean, diversity brings so much richness to our lives yeah. Yeah. and the community. Um, yeah. But it takes, I take, I guess it, it takes a trust in believing that it will be okay to open ourselves up, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I, you know, that's probably part of exactly what's going on in our lives today, which is really hard in our country. It is. Yeah. 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 I feel, I feel like I'm, I'm really always just trying to expose myself to a different perspective and a different story and try to understand how that changes me. And, and I'm not, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm like really great. Um, when, when it comes to like conversations with my family or with, or with, or with, or with, or with people I grew up with or whatever. Um, that are that are a little more conservative and a little more uh, fearful of those elements. Um, I I think uh, I'm not as patient as I could be or as I should be or, or I, maybe I shouldn't be. I don't I don't know. I I have a, I have my own struggle of of how patient I should be or how, you know, how much I should just call people out, you know, or, or whatever. Um, I, know, but, I, know, I, I know what you're talking um, about. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's, I don't know where the balance is, but I'm trying to find it. Um, but I think where I, where I succeed more often is by creating a story of, you know, a piece of art that can be taken I was I was think of it as this like kind of multifaceted like jewel that you can kind of look through and see 
a different perspective every time you turn it, you know, that, it, that, that art kind of does that for us. And we can, we can study it and we can look at it and we can watch it again, or we can keep looking at it and keep coming back to it and keep being changed the more we engage with it. Right. right. Yeah. That reminds me, we do a holiday show uh, every December. Although this December we're not because we didn't know what schools would be like and if they would come to the theater, obviously. But um, we, the holiday show that one of the holiday shows that we commissioned and did is based on true events in Billings, Montana, um, back in the early 90s when a young boy put a menorah in the window and a racist threw a brick. And the whole town of Billings came together. Um, led by church leaders and community leaders to take a stand against racism because at at the time it would the uh, Billings was struggling with not just anti-semitism but you know anti-gay sentiment and anti everything that was not white yeah. Christian you know but when one day um, when it, the schools were leaving the theater. Uh, I used to stand in the back and watch and say goodbye to kids. And a boy stopped and he said, I wish I had a video camera. And I said, why? And he said, because then I could watch it over and over, yeah. which I thought was just great. Yeah. And that's one thing about film, different than live theater. You know, on film, you've captured it. Um, yeah. So yeah. it's a little bit of a different experience. So. It is such a different experience. I, I mean, I, I kind of came into, um, yeah, I started working at the Guthrie Group al almost five years ago now. And I, I came into it just really believing like we had a very, such a similar language and like that it was pretty much a, a pretty, pretty equal experience in terms of you're watching a story, you're, you're being changed by that story. But I, I definitely came to understand that that theater experience is a very different one. To have to have the actors in that room with you is a is a very different pull on on a person's you know heartstrings than it is watching the movie. I mean, I, on a, in a in a movie, I can I can manipulate music and I can focus the camera on a very specific thing. And so there's like this, you know, I can, I can kind of control the audience response in a certain way. There's a lot of tools at my disposal to, to kind of do that. Um, but the theater has this like very like, much more like uncontrolled environment, though everything can, is, is still very controlled the audience can react so differently, I feel, than, than, the, than the cinema. And there's just such a different, it, it's just a different energy that is really exciting. Well, you're creating a truth in a moment yeah. with an energy that will be different depending upon the audience, you know? Yeah. Um, it's not always the same. And it's really exciting. So I'm looking forward to this whole process. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you're excited because yeah, it's 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 contagious. <laughs> it's good to it's yeah. I'm excited. Great, and thanks for thanks talking for today too. Yeah, absolutely. Really thanks for it. We'll see you soon. For asking me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Bye bye. bye.